Hello everybody, Washoot here, and welcome back to Semi-Aquatic Circus. Okay, so last time we figured out that Capella is more semi-aquatic than perhaps anyone here, with her goat head and her dolphin tail, or fish tail. Somebody knows that she perhaps is resembling a constellation. We're hopefully going to figure out how everybody reacts to what we've been hiding under our dress. So hopefully they're accepting of us. I feel like we might be the ultimate life form for the Semi-Aquatic Circus, so let's figure out what's happening. I can't believe it. A goat yet with a fish tail. Capella, you're a true semi-aquatic. Ha, huh, truly. I, uh, I mean, uh, it's not like I thought it was impossible or anything, but I never would have guessed that I... Ah, uh, cutie pie, you should have told me. If I knew you were a mermaid, I would have shared the tub. Why didn't you tell us? Hey now, easy. I'm sure Cap has her reasons. Y yes I do. I promise I do. And I promise I meant to tell you all too, just uh, not while we were still here. Hmm. But I suppose the cat's out of the bag now. So if you'd uh, allow me to explain. Capella, are you sure? <laughs> allow me to explain. I was born this way. No. Do you think it's like an experiment? Maybe she was cursed. I don't want to push you into talking about it if you're not comfortable with it. No, no, it's a uh, long past overdue. And y'all have been so kind to me. The least I can do is be honest with you in return. My name is Capella Von Chaver. Ah, oh, dude, I'm gonna have to look that up. I've been so awful with la names lately. Chevra. Chevra? Chevra. 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 Capella von Chevra. You guys like rhyming. My father, Raphael von Chevra. And esteemed swordsman, the likes of which his family had never seen in their lineage before. My mother, Amelia, the inheritor of her family's estate and brilliant mathematician in her own regard. And then there's me, their daughter, and sole heir to the aristocratic von Sheriff name. But... Perhaps I should not have been. For I was born with a missing hand and a fish's tail, and, uh... It made my father furious. He didn't understand how both their bloodlines together could have produced such a crooked child. He accused my mother of having an affair, even though doctors had assured him that I was his child. He wouldn't hear any opposition, though, even going so far as to refuse any further looks into our family tree to see what could have caused this. It's just, uh, as well, I was already born. There was nothing to be done. My arm was suited with a prosthetic hand, and my tail to be kept hidden under my clothing. Only my immediate family and the doctors who delivered me were aware of the existence of my tail. And life carried on. My father threw himself into his sword fighting. I believe it was his way of releasing his frustrations about the whole ordeal. Based on the gossip I would hear from the house staff, you know, maids and butlers and the like. I think he was torn between wanting to try for a new child and not wanting to risk having another kid like me. As for my mother, it was probably best she did not get pregnant again. Her health deteriorated the years following my birth. I was too young to know what sickness overtook her, but old enough to believe that it must have been my fault somehow. Especially since, uh, my, uh, my father more than implied it was a fitting punishment for her. 
for cursing his daughter in such a way. Eventually, my mother passed, leaving my father as my only family. My father was... Eh, no. My father is a very strict man. He said exactly what he meant and followed through on his words. Growing up, I always tried to listen to whatever he said. Whenever he felt I needed to be disciplined, I considered myself blessed. He did not use the sharp end of his sword. But so long as I behaved, I did not have to worry. So I always tried to listen and be on the best behavior I could manage. Until recently, I suppose. How do I say this, uh... Um... Uh, I grew up with the expectations of an arranged marriage. It was how my parents married, how their parents married, and uh, it's only tradition. I was alright with that. It took longer than expected, but eventually my father had found a suitor for me. We were set to be married in the coming years. But I want to say it was a few months ago now when the incident occurred. One day, when my fiancé and his mother were over for lunch. I had a bit of a stumble and my skirt flew, my tail was revealed. I had no idea what to say. What would I even have said? So, as I'm sure anyone could guess. They pulled out of the marriage. They did not want to risk my ex-fiancé and I's future children coming out deformed. My father ended up paying them quite the handsome sum of money to keep quiet about the whole thing. When outsiders would ask why the marriage fell through, everyone involved would simply answer that both of our family's goals were not aligned. And the con conversations would end there. My father was less than pleased about the whole ordeal. He told me I'd pay him back for it one day. I told him I would return every cent. Anything did not upset him further. I lived my whole life doing whatever it took to make him happy. Or, at the very least, not mad at me. But I couldn't do that. And it's why I ran away. Father called me into his office one day. He told me he wanted to go looking for a husband for me again. But we couldn't have a repeat of last time. It was a hard enough sell as it is. And so... He had organized an operation to have my tail removed. While it could never change my genes, no one would ever have to know I had one to begin with. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. I always tried to do everything he asked of me. Always listening, behaving, changing my ways. Changing every part of myself to be someone he could love. Someone who wasn't ashamed of. Somebody he didn't look at with such contempt. But not that. I couldn't do that. It's my body. I let him have control of every other aspect of my life. I'd like to be able to have control over something that belongs to me. Control over whether or not I th I think it should change. I, uh... I'm so sorry, everyone. Hmm, so maybe the reason she was hiding it when she was here at the circus was just because she was used to hiding it her whole life? Man, that's sad. I hope you understand why I had to keep this a secret. I was, uh, so embarrassed at first. But after getting to know you, I felt I could trust that you would not shame me for such a thing. But I still couldn't say anything. If news spread about how a goat with a fish's tail was seen around here, I'm sure my father would find me. And I don't even want to imagine the kind of reaction he'd have to knowing our secret had gotten out. Mmm, this isn't good. Viz is like, wait, you have a fish's tail? Huh? What do you mean? It's, uh, Darwin was telling me just the other day. 
There was a goat man here looking around for someone. Uh-oh. Saving. Probably not matter. Doesn't matter much, but okay. What? He's here? Don't worry. We didn't say anything about you. But I'm also not sure how convinced he was that we didn't know anything. Ah, I see. Throw him on his ass, Clyde. <laughs> we should kill him. <laughs> Absolutely. You'd go to jail if you kill someone. No one is killing anyone. Look, it's, uh... I'm not blaming you, Capella. I just, uh... Wish you'd told us earlier how dire the situation really is. If we had known how dangerous it really was for you to still be here. Eh, it's fine. We know now. Alright, everyone. Start packing. Huh? We're leaving early and we're getting you as far out as possible. We can't do that. We already sold tickets for the rest of the week. Huh? We can't do returns. And if we leave now, it's going to ruin our reputation. As much as I hate to admit it, the kid's got a point. I don't think we have any way of rounding up all the people who bought tickets. Even if we could, I don't think we could afford to return them anyways. If we ever come back this way, I don't think anyone's going to want to see us again. But you guys... Savannah, I'll be fine. Uh-oh. Uh, but Capella... He still doesn't know I'm here, and we've been safe so far. After today, it's just two more nights. I think we can make it. Please, I insist. I don't want to ruin anything for the circus. Besides, even with the possibility of him around, I feel safe with you all. It'll be okay. 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 We're going to continue our shows as planned. But the second we're done with our last show, we're packing up immediately. I don't care if it takes us all night. You hear me, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Whatever you say, boss man. If anyone he tries to lay a finger on Cappy, they're going to have to go through me first. It's like you say, you call the shots around here. Thank you so much, everyone. I look forward to traveling with you. They're all going to die. He's a swordsman. Well, there weren't any choices in that one. Huh, alright. Day six. Capella. Maybe we should come up with, like, a pet name for me. We'll call me something else, other than Capella, in case people are listening, with dad money. Check these monkeys, make sure they aren't, weren't paid off to report me. Ah, hello everyone. I, uh, I apologize over yesterday and all. I truly, no, oh, Capella, it's fine, you don't have to explain yourself. We know what it's like to be betrayed by a man you were supposed to trust. I see. Anyways, uh, did Savannah tell you? Tell me why. I'm going to be spending the day with you. Oh, hell yeah. You know, just in case. Figured it was better that you weren't alone. Ah, but I... Uh, don't you have to do the trapeze together? I'm not messing up your performance, am I? No, it's all fine. We've all done two-person trapeze before. Well, if you're sure. And you wanted to come with me, Viz? I mean, I kind of have to, don't I? No? You wouldn't be able to understand Darwin or Nana, and Nana especially wouldn't be able to understand you. Oh, uh, that's true. Very much so. She wouldn't? She's deaf. Which one's deaf? The one with covered ears? Or the... Oh, uh, clearly. I see. Do Darwin and Nana speak sign language? Huh? I know sign language. I was taught a variety of languages as a child. It's very important for business, don't you know? Ahem. Hello, Nana. I'm sorry I didn't properly introduce myself before. I'm Capella. Well then. Oh, look at she's so happy. <laughs> I guess I don't have to be the one to stick with you if you don't want. This is for your benefit, so I... Uh... Who would you rather stay with you today? I want the smiling monkey. 
Oh goodness, I have to choose? Wait, hold on. If I'm speaking with sign language, doesn't that mean less people will hear me? Right? There's a lot of people that don't know sign language. Oh goodness, I have to choose. Um, I was actually wondering if I could talk a bit more to, uh... Let's go Viz first. Viz, I'm not gonna completely cut you out. Actually, we'll go left to right, because that's easier. Or maybe I should go with Viz. Hmm. I'll go with Viz, because that's what I said first. Ah, but I'd love to get to know y'all soon, too. Really, uh, well then. Let's get going. I won't hold up Nana and Darwin's extra practicing time. Or maybe it's Nana, like banana. Hmm. I can't help but notice they kind of look like they're dressed like a banana. Capella? Hmm. There's no easy way to say this. I already bathed. Is everything alright? Did something happen? No, I, uh... Yes? I just, uh... Ugh. I want to say I'm sorry. Oh. For what? When you first got here, I didn't like you very much. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like, you could have just not said that. And I've been kind of hostile whenever you were around. Ah, I see. I mean, if you were being hostile, then I did not notice. Ah, uh, don't say that. Makes me feel even worse. Biz. Why didn't you like me? I'm perfect. It's okay if you didn't like me. No, don't say that. I'm trying to own up to it, okay? Because uh, it really wasn't right for me to act that way. Esmond told you about him, right? Hmm? Who? Fernando? Yeah, because it was like when you got here. All I could think about was him. Wow, you are angry underneath that blindfold. I hope we catch Fernando and make him do something dangerous on the trapeze. And I just couldn't stop. Here we go again, it's happening again, yada yada yada. And seeing everyone be so ready to let you join even after what had happened and we had agreed upon. Ah, uh, it got me so twisted. Like we were letting it happen all over again. Uh-huh. Then the week started going on and everyone kept saying such nice stuff to you. We I still don't know, by the way. If <laughs> Capella's just gonna complete reverse betrayal everyone and be like, ha! You thought I was like Fernando, because I am Fernando. I dressed up as Capella. Pogo kept gushing over how cute you are. Yo-Yo said you were actually pretty cool. Even Savannah was talking about how you weren't so bad. And hearing all that made me feel... Upset? Angry? Hurt? You look angry. No, more like, uh, alone. I guess because they... Got to talk to you and all, and I felt better about you. You were someone they could trust, someone they didn't have to worry about. But I still couldn't give up what happened with Fernando. Were they forgetting that they all liked and trust him a bunch too before he stabbed us in the back? I started feeling like it was just a matter of time. In just a little while longer, you'd show your true colors too, and everyone would feel like such a fool for falling for the same trick twice. And then yesterday happened, and you started telling us about your home life. I don't want to believe you would lie about something that serious, especially for a down-on-its-luck circus like us. No, I'd never. Mm-hmm. And now it's just, a. Uh, it's hard for me. Not just my apology, but... Damn it, I'm sorry, Capella. That's okay, I didn't even notice. Hmm? Because even after this and where we are now... It's still hard for me to let go and trust you fully. That's okay. It's okay if you don't trust me. It's like you said earlier. I know what it's like to be betrayed by a man you were supposed to trust. If I could trust my father was making the right decision, I certainly wouldn't be here now. And I don't think I'd be able to trust him if he promised to go back on his decision either. I know our situations aren't uh, completely comparable, but I know how you must feel really careful with your trust right now. So, I understand if you don't trust me. I'm not offended. It's alright. Thanks, Capella. That's really cool of you. Most people wouldn't react well to what I just said. I am quite experienced with people who do not react well when they are not told what they want to hear. 
I do not want to be that person for others. Ah, sorry about that. But really, thanks. I just, uh... I say that word a lot, don't I? I just get worried about everyone here. Especially my siblings. I'm the one who has to speak up for them. How do they communicate to you? Hmm. I love him a lot. I just really don't want a repeat of last time. So, uh, yeah. Sorry for being so standoffish these last past few days. And thanks for understanding my whole trust issue, too. Thank you. For what? For walking with me still. We might not be friends yet. You don't even have to trust me, but... I do... I'd like to believe that this is a star. Heh, <laughs> yeah. It's been a hectic week, but I... Ah, damn it. What? I think I'm starting to see why everyone says what they say about you. Maybe you really aren't so bad. Thank you. You fell for it. <laughs> Stupid monkey. I'm going to steal something from you. Oh, God. Capella. Can I, uh... In a first step of trust, I guess. Can I confess something to you? Uh, yes, of course. Is everything all right? No. Yeah, it's all fine. I just, uh... I wanted to say I think your voice is pretty, that's all. Ah, thank you, Viz. I think your voice is pretty, too. Wow, I did it my first try. Clearly, we're going to go back and talk to the other monkeys. I want to talk to Nana. But I'd love to get you all soon, too. No hard feelings. I think Nana happy anyway, so look at her. She's already happy. Have fun, you two. How would a blind monkey do the trapeze? Huh. Maybe it's like muscle memory or something. Like second nature. <laughs> Capella. Yes. I am flattered you have chose to walk with me. So now that we are alone together, I would like to impart to you some knowledge. Go ahead. Please do not feel offended if Darwin does not verbally speak to you. He is only comfortable verbally communicating with Fizz. Oh, okay, so he can talk. I get it. Now that makes sense, how the trapeze would work. Because you need, like, a signal, right? Oh, I see. That's okay. I don't mind. He is of hearing, though. So don't forget that not only can you talk to him, but he can hear anything you say. When the circus was filled there, people would often forget that he could hear them talking around him. Ruined a surprise party one time. Funny stuff. At least it was something positive. I would hate to learn they were saying mean stuff behind your back. Me too. But everyone was always so nice. Back when we were a full circus. Also, I want to tell you. Fizz can be a bit cold sometimes, but they are very sweet. I promise. Like ice cream. Are they? They are very protective sibling. Maybe a bit too protective sometimes. But I owe much to them. I am very grateful. What do you mean by that? I'm allowed to ask, of course. I will not get too deep into it. It is water under the bridge. All I wish to share is that I could not hear it coming. Oh. But they saw it. And they protected me even when it cost them to do so. It was many years ago now. We were still just children. As you can imagine, it gave me much room to reflect. And with all the time past, we have discussed it much, my siblings and I. In the end, I simply feel lucky to have them in my life. I hope you understand. I see. Nana? Yes? I want to ask, are you okay? Yes, I told you, it was water under the bridge. That's not what I'm referring to. Eh. I'm referring to something else. What do you mean? Did I sign something weird? No, I was just wondering. Do you not like to talk about yourself? Excuse me? What gave that impression? Well, you told me about Darwin, then you told me about Viz. But what about Nana? You're interested in that? Of course I am. Wanted to spend some time with you, didn't I? 
It's because I'm interested in you. I'm sure your siblings have already told you much about me. So tell me about yourself. Oh, wow, this is exciting. Haha. -ha. I don't get to sign about myself very often. Where do I even start? Uh, hello, my name is Nana. My favorite color is yellow. Uh-huh. I like doing trapeze, and I would like to try ice skating one day. My favorite food is strawberry banana smoothie. I like clouds that look like flowers and flowers that look like clouds. I'm scared of the dark, so I'm happy to be part of a circus because the lights shine bright at night. Windy days are my favorites, and I want to own a kite to enjoy them more. You're signing so quickly. Go easy on me. I am a bit out of practice. Sorry, I'm just very excited. It's not very often I get to share parts of myself with others. That's so. Uh, it's not as if everyone knows to sign like you do. Yeah, it's like super rare. When people want to communicate with me, is often a bit of a process. Whenever something needs to be passed down to me, it's Darwin who delivers the news unto, unto me. And likewise, when I wish to communicate with others, I need to sign to Darwin who speaks to Viz and Viz will state what I want to say. As I'm sure you can imagine, I never really get the opportunity to communicate with others. It could be a hassle and not many want to bother with the effort. <laughs> That's where Capel is just like, yeah, you're boring, bye. I don't want to talk to you anymore. This isn't fair to you. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would if they knew how you felt. Our friends here have gone above and beyond for me. I have no doubt they would do the same for you. We just need to let them know. Before you know it, I'm sure they'll be able to communicate with everyone just as easily. Ah, uh, Capella. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm happy you joined the circus. I didn't give it much thought before, but, exp er, but experiencing it now... It is so, so nice to feel known by more than just my siblings. I'm looking so forward to becoming your friend. Oh, Nana. Me too. I had a nice chat with Nana today. Wish we could have discussed more. But before I knew it, the show let out and she reunited with her siblings. Maybe she'll walk with me again during the evening show, but... Part of me wishes I could go back this morning. Discuss just a bit more in that moment. Oh well. Good thing this game lets you do exactly that, Capella. Let me see. I'll remember that. If I ever plan my own surprise party, I suppose. No, I'd never known, thrown one before, so I wouldn't know what to do anyways. Maybe one day we could plan one. We should get a peanut butter cake. Peanut butter is one of Darwin's favorites. Oh, peanut butter, huh? Noted. Also, I want to tell you. We're going to have so much fun traveling together. Yes, I think so too. Maybe you can even sleep in our tent sometime. We could play games and share scary stories without bothering the others. But what if I get scared? Then I'll tell a silly story until you weren't scared anymore. That would be nice. I'm excited to share many silly stories with you. Oh boy. Capella, God, please don't be a villain. Everyone here is so wonderful. All right, Darwin, you're up. But I'd love to get to know all of you soon, too. No hard feelings. Darwin appreciates company. Uh-huh. I've noted that you like peanut butter, Darwin. From an alternate timeline. Have fun, you two. I should, uh, say something. I was the one who asked to walk with him, after all. Hello, Darwin. It's very nice to be walking with you. Esmond tells me you have a crush on him. <laughs> Starting off like that. Ah. Is it that obvious? Oh, ha. Uh, not to me. Though it's not like I'd really know. I'm not always the best on picking up on that kind of the stuff. Well, clearly someone is. 
Please understand. It's not as if I intended to. Ah, Darwin. I don't believe anyone intends for that kind of thing. If we did, well... Eh, are you okay? Can you tell me about it? What, Esmond? Yes, I would very much like to hear about your feelings towards him. Uh, now it just feels like you're trying to embarrass me. No, I don't want to embarrass you, I just, uh... I won't force you to. What would you like to know? Oh, uh, could you tell me... <laughs> when, how, how you met, when you knew you liked him. Hmm, let's do this one first. I fell. Did you just sign that you fell? As in, for him? Yes, but also no. You could say me falling led to me falling for him. Did you fall on top of him? Allow me to explain. Ahem. <sighs> Did he just clear his throat through sign language? It was during trapeze practice one day. I let go of the bar too early and naturally fell downwards. I wasn't worried about it. These things happen and I was headed towards the safety net. At least, I thought I was. And then somehow, I was in Esmond's arms. He said I was... He saw me falling a bit too close to the ledge and he wanted to make sure I was safe. I would have been fine even without his help, but I... Having him rush in to help me... Did you know he arrived to the circus with a leg injury? Ah, yes, he told me. He was still recovering just a bit when he saved me. And even still, with his injury, the safety net was there. He was so moved to help me, heavens forbid something actually did go wrong. I don't think that's exactly when I knew how I felt about him. But it was certainly the start of me thinking there could be something there. It was hard not to feel something in that moment. Safety net. Safety net? Savannah told me that you guys don't have a safety net right now. We don't. The old one got ruined while traveling. No worries, though. We got a much safer routine while we wait to get a new one. Any injury, if any, would be minimal. Ah, alright. That makes you feel better, then. Though, you wouldn't be worried anyways, would you? Huh? You'd have Esmond to catch you if you fell. Ah, there it is. And here I started thinking you were only concerned about the safety net. I couldn't be. I'm also fascinated hearing about what love means. And to you. Is that so? Why, what does love mean to you? Maybe I embarrass myself in return. Because... Uh, love is whatever I'm told it to be. Mm. Oof. Both of those are pretty weak sauce answers, Capella. Come on. I don't know. Oh? In the romantic sense, at least. I did not growing up with the expectations of typical romance, you know. I am a Von, I already forgot I already forgot how to say it. Von Shavar. Shar Oh wait, I still have the thing open. Chevra. Von Chevra. When you and are a Von Chevra, you have to arranged marriage. My fiance was well enough and all, certainly easier to talk to than my father. And I'm sure you'd have followed through on those plans, got married and raised a family. I wouldn't be dissatisfied, but it's not like I had even a proper date with him before. I think the most alone we ever got was walking in the garden while his mother and my father watched from the windows of our estate. And even then, it all just felt so formal. It was business, it wasn't romance. And that's why I feel a bit embarrassed. Because now that I am away from that lifestyle, I don't know, it would be nice if I could experience a proper romance for myself. Ah, I see. I suppose, in that way, we are after the same thing. Ha! Esmond would be lucky to have you. I wish you luck in your... I don't know that yet, but I'll say it to make you feel good. Really? What makes you say that? Because I feel lucky just talking to you. You seem like a true romantic. I could only hope to court someone with such a soft idea of life. You know, Yo-Yo was right. You are a great listener. As are you. Oh. I just don't know, though. I mean, I've got no experience in the world of romance. I wouldn't even know where to begin. 
Ah, would anyone even like me? Capelle, I'm sure there are more people who like you than you know. Ooh, what is that? I can click on the tail, huh? Oh my. Fernando, I'm ready to have whatever is told to me that's gonna happen. Am I dreaming right now? Dreaming? Why, what gave you that idea? You, uh, you must be Fernando, correct? The one and, uh, oh, no, that's not true. I'm sure you'll find a few folks named Fernando if you went looking. This must be a dream. I, uh, I don't believe there is a way you could be before me right now. All right, then. All right. What? Should I be expected to talk you out of it? If I am a dream, what would, uh, or would I be able to know that for myself? As far as I would ever be able to know, I am real. Uh-huh. I hope for your sake it's a dream. Really, why is that? Because I've got a bone to pick with you. That's so. What did I do? You know quite well what you did. You betrayed everyone here. You stole their money, their funds. But most importantly, you broke their hearts. That's just life, isn't it? If I weren't me doing it, someone would do the same to them eventually. That's wrong. Nope. That reflects how you think. It's possible that they could have gone the rest of their careers without finding a scumbag like you. Maybe even you. I'd never. Not to people like that. I never do anything to hurt them. Would you like to bet on it? Capella, are you saying that there are people you would do that to? Huh? I am a scryer, didn't you know that? Hey, uh, it means I can read your future. I'm quite talented at it, too. What's the matter? You're not scared of finding out something unpleasant, are you? Of course not, because I know I would never betray them. Mm, if you're so sure, then gaze into my crystal ball, and I will see it for myself. I am looking. Um, should I be seeing something, too? Aha! Oh, my, my, how interesting. What? What is it? Congratulations on the wedding. I... what? Your husband. He's got fiery orange hair. He's a con man, and he's trying to hide it. But everyone around him can see it clear as day. Uh-huh. You're not referring to yourself, are you? Ah, uh, do you think I am? I didn't take you for the flirting kind. Strange. Despite wherever I gaze, your little friends are nowhere to be found. Perhaps your bond wasn't as strong as you thought. I think you're simply reading the wrong future. My, I didn't expect so much bite from you. I suppose it's all yet to be seen. Is there anything more I can do for you? Hmm? I mean, you're bound to be waking up soon. No. I think I've heard enough out of you. Haha. Ha. Very well. It's too bad I would have loved to read your palm next. If only to hold the hand of such an elegant, refined young woman for a bit. Alas, I'll let you go. Farewell, mi amor. I look forward to when we may speak again. Oh, should I have been doing a French accent this whole time? Fernando. That was a route? That secret chapter has a route? You and your little tail. I saw that the first time I opened this up. I was like, what is that? Was that because we learned the truth about Fernando? Well, everybody, that's going to be it for Semi-Aquatic Circus. Things are definitely starting to pick up again. I'm wondering very much about if Capella is going to be an awful person or not. Sure hope not. Who knows how she's going to act in the presence of her father? Should he and her have a run-in? And maybe depending on the level of 
friendship bond you have with the people, Gogo might kill him? Turn him into goat stew? Turn him into something that can fit in her tub? I don't know. I'm kind of like envisioning a scenario right now where he gets like bound up into like a little basketball shape and then Pogo and Clyde are just basketball, you know, dribbling him around and then he just slam dunk it into the basketball hoop. Like the monkeys catch it and do some sort of trapeze things all around, throwing it around and well, anyway, so that'll be it for Semi-Aquatic Circus for now. Looking forward to the finale and uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.